Hey guys, Sophia here for my great challenge. Welcome back to my channel and it is the fall which means that it's finally soup season again. I know that Linda has asked me to uh, show her how to make easy soups so today I'm going to show you probably one of the easiest way I know to make a butternut squash soup. And by the way, this works also with uh, pumpkin. Halloween is coming, so instead of throwing away the pulp of the pumpkins you're going to carve, use them for a soup. And that works with acorn and a whole bunch of vegetables too. This soup is easy to make, it doesn't take a lot of time, and it also doesn't create a big mess. Instead of peeling all your vegetables and chopping them in little pieces, you're actually going to roughly chop them put them in the oven, let them bake, put them in the blender, cook your soup on the stove and you are done. So let's get started. Ingredients first. Here are all my ingredients and you don't have to do exactly the same thing. The basic, basic soup is going to be butternut squash, onion, garlic, carrots, fresh herbs, and maybe you'll add a tomato and that's it. I'm adding all the vegetables, um, some of them are from the garden, actually the tomato is too. This is a Korean pepper, but it's actually a sweet pepper. And I'm adding a turnip and another one of my leftover tomatoes and one apple. So this optional, this is optional, this is optional, and this is optional. So that's really all you need to make a delicious soup. So first things first. I gotta wash these guys and instead of struggling to chop them up, I'm gonna cut them in half. Oven at 375. So I've just washed those two butternut squash and what I'm going to do is split them in half. Cut the ends. And when you cut the bottom, it's much easier um, to put it on your chopping board so you have good leverage to cut it in half. Here we go. And all I'm going to do is take a spoon and remove. This part. And all I'm doing is putting it on a baking sheet with aluminum foil underneath it. Next, I'm taking my garlic and I'm just going to chop off the top like this. I'm not removing all of the uh, skin, just a little bit. And that's going to go on top of my baking sheet, just like this. And I'm pretty much doing the same with the onion. I cut this part. The other side. This one I will remove the skin. And I'm going 
going to cut it in quarters. My coriander pepper left. These are not spicy at all. They actually more like uh, red peppers. I'm just putting it like this on my sheet. Turnip, same thing. quarters and on the sheet and the only thing that's missing right now is the tomato which as you know is optional I'm gonna put it uh, a little bit here a little bit there wherever I got a little bit of a space right here and here and here all right that's it herbs don't go in yet and the apple I will cook in the microwave so that's ready to go into the oven and what I'm going to do is drizzle olive oil over the whole thing, especially the garlic. Okay. All right. Salt and pepper. So this is coarse salt. Here I have black peppercorn. Add it to taste. If you really want a full taste to it, you can add nutmeg. I'm going to put that in the oven and it's going to stay in there for a good 45 minutes or until my butternut squash is all soft and I can plant a fork all the way through. We got 45 minutes. How easy was this? Okay, and minimum cleanup. I don't have bits and pieces of vegetables all over the place. I didn't have to chop onions in tiny pieces. It's pretty much all big chunks you put in the oven. So what's going to happen after 45 minutes? I'm basically going to take my blender I'm going to scoop out the flesh of the butternut squash. And by the way, if you don't want too much squash flavor, you can just use one squash. I like it, so I'll put two. Or if you find a big one, those were kind of small actually. So you scoop all of that, you put it in your blender, you squeeze the, um, you're gonna squeeze the garlic to get all of the roasted garlic bulbs um, out of you know, the skin. And you put that in there, you put everything in, basically. Then I'll transfer everything in a pot. I will add my herbs, and this is the leftover herbs I have from the garden. It's just basically oregano and thyme. Sage would be better, um, but I don't know if I have any sage left. I may have some in the freezer. I'll put the apple in the microwave and just basically throw it in there as well. And you let it cook for about 20 minutes, you know, until you get a little bit of a bubble on top. And that's it, you're ready to serve. Serve it with toast. If you want to do garlic toast, even better. Um, you don't even need to add any more spices. But again, if you want more of a fall flavor, you can add nutmeg. Um, not cinnamon, but I would add nutmeg. Or you can do curry, or you can do paprika if you want a little bit of a spice feel to it there's barely any cleaning that needs to be done and i can actually go somewhere else and do something else i don't have to be a slave at my stove stirring a soup making sure the bottom of my pot doesn't burn that's one of the issues that most people have with soup is that they have to babysit it 
Not this one. I'll be right back. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna pull them out, put them on top of the stove, and we're gonna let the stuff cool down a little bit. And let's see. Okay, nice. Okay, that's solved. So basically you roast your vegetables, right? I'm gonna let that um, cool off because it's gotta go into the blender and I need to be able to take it off the, um, the skin. And then you just mix it up, add a little bit of chicken broth if you want to loosen it up a little bit, add your herbs and then put it in a pot and let it cook for another 20 or so minutes. So again, depending on how big your butternut squash is and how uh, super hard it is, you might have to cook it a little bit longer. But anyway, I'm going to start putting the stuff inside the um, blender. And I'm going to start with onions. Chicken broth. You don't have to put chicken, you can put vegetable if you are vegetarian. Because the vegetables were braised, oh, all the flavors are coming out. And it's, I'm telling you, this is the best way to make this kind of soup.
Okay, final step, and once it's all blended, you take a pot of the cast iron, or whichever pot you have, and you bring in your puree, you dump it all in there, get a wooden spoon, Now, the thickness of it is up to you. If you want it very thick, like this, sticks to your rib type soup, you just cook it this way. Or you go ahead and you add a little bit more um, chicken broth. So I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to cook it at medium, add a little bit more chicken broth to it, not too much because I don't like it too liquidy. I'm going to add my herbs, and it just has to simmer for a good 20 minutes. And you're done. A little bit more chicken broth. And again, you can do vegetable broth if you prefer. Alright. Okay. So what about the apple, right? I'm gonna put it in the microwave and close this. I'm going to keep this just like that. I'm going to put my apple in the microwave and I'm going to blend it with a little bit of chicken broth and the rest of the puree so that way I get the whole thing clean and I dump it in there. Serve it with a little bit of sour cream or um, any kind of cream. Let me put the apple in the microwave. Alright, so put that back in. Two minutes in the microwave. Keep the skin, add a little bit. of chicken stock. Pulse. <laughs> and that gets added directly to the pot. Let it simmer for another 10 minutes and you're done. I got Scott here. You good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is um, butternut squash soup. Swirl. With a swirl of uh, cream. So what's different about this is that I braised all the vegetables first yeah. instead of just like having them boil. So it released all of its flavor. It smells good. Mmm, garlic. Tastes good. Yeah, it's roasted, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. You like that? Yeah. It's really good, huh? Mmm. Yeah, very good. Mmm. Mm -hmm. All the flavors. 
Do you taste the apple? No, I taste garlic. You would taste the garlic more if I didn't have an apple. The apple is just to counterbalance a little bit okay. because otherwise it's too garlicky. And then you don't taste the butternut squash anymore. Can you taste the squash? A little bit. Mostly garlic. Mostly garlic? Yeah. Right, so I may have a little bit too much garlic or not enough apple. Huh? It's yeah, really mostly good. Garlic. Mostly garlic. It's really, really good. Yeah. So, toast with butter or garlic bread or whatever. Uh, okay. This is gluten free bread. How's the thickness? Is it too thick? I personally like no, it I that like way. No, I like it. I like it that. Like mm. that. This is an excellent soup. So, what I've just done serves about eight people. This is dinner, right? Yeah. Okay. You want to keep it for dinner? That way you don't have to make dinner? Yeah, that way you don't have to make dinner. That's excellent. Willie will like it. Mm. Mm. All right. We're going to finish that. Mm -hmm. An easy soup to make. Not only is it easy, but it's absolutely delicious. <laughs> I wouldn't add nutmeg or anything else, okay? I would just do it as is. It minimizes the amount of work and it minimizes the amount of cleaning. I, I barely have anything to clean. Dinner is made that will stick to your ribs and then you can freeze it. You put it in the ice cube tray and then you freeze it. And then once you have your little cubes done, you, put, you dump them all into a container or a Ziploc bag and you have soup. Or you just leave it like that in a Ziploc bag and you flatten it. But the soup keeps very well. All right, and it's a uh, um, an easy way of making soup. It's not. I don't think it's intimidating, Linda. You can do this, okay? I hope you try it. Comment down below. So if you are making this soup based on this recipe, please come back and leave me a comment and let me know how you like it. I would give it an A plus. But then again, I like this kind of flavor. I think that this is an excellent soup and it's really easy to make. You're not slaving, chopping everything. And because again, I braised all the vegetables, all the flavors got released and that uh, garlic in there is, this is gold, okay? Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and this easy recipe. Um, let me know if you want me to make more soup recipes. I think it's the perfect season. I'm not going to make one every week, but I could do a whole series all the way up to the end of the year, maybe like eight soup. Because um, I think that soup is a meal on its own and it's perfect for the winter. And if you're trying to have like a light, kind of a light dinner earlier in the day before it gets too dark, this is perfect. You don't have to take a big bowl like I have. Um, perfect for lunch at work. It's just... Who doesn't like soup? Yeah, let me know. Do you do you not like soup? And if you don't like soup, tell me down below why. Um, but this one, I'm telling you, is gold and I hope you try it. So again, thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to share this video if you really, really liked it. Subscribe right here in the corner and hit that bell button so you get notified every time I post a new video, including a soup recipe. And you can check me out on Facebook and Instagram at my great challenge. Etsy shop, links down below, and Patreon, patreon.com slash mygreatchallenge for exclusive content not seen on YouTube. I'm going to finish my soup. That will be my dinner for tonight. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.